we attempted to get our big butts to the top of Isla Coronado's volcano. They all swung up from the water, they all shrunk up. They all, it rained a few weeks ago and they all... Everything is swollen up, even the cactuses. The landscape was covered in loose, porous volcanic rock. It was dotted with elephant trees, shrubs, and cacti. Little Inukshuk lined the ambiguous trail. <laughs> that was confusing. The last 100 meters or so became quite steep, and we had to use all four limbs to climb the hollow rocks. We noticed hidden messages spelled out on the plateau from above. The season's northerlies pushed us kindly back into Bahia de los Andes. There are four launch ramps in the bay in various states of disrepair. Fishermen launch and retrieve boats expertly from the ramps on an hourly basis. We parked ourselves out by the pilings in front of Guillermo's restaurant, where the old shipwreck was slowly being scrapped piece by piece. We hunkered down for the evening, which brought a surprise squall in which we dragged, luckily away from shore. Our friends Scott and Lily, who were traveling down the Baja Peninsula in their van, came by the bay and we traded our 40 watt panels for their 100 watt panels. Well, that was a short trip. Yeah, that was a short trip. You can still see the last point, but it's a good place to start in the morning on our way south again. We made a hop to the nearby Puerto Don Juan just to check out how flat the reputable anchorage was in this persistent northerly wind. It was quite flat, with a perfect amount of breeze passing through the entrance to push us to our anchoring spot. Next day was spinnaker flying weather, as we made our way down past an anchorage called Anima Slot. This was the first time we flew our spinnaker actually, as we do not have a sock to douse the sail properly. Robbie continued to adjust the spinny all day to try and get the most out of the small sail. And it's a relatively small sail for our rig, but we don't mind. Later in the afternoon, when we expected the wind to pick up, we turned the boat directly downwind, blocked the spinnaker's wind with our mainsail, and pulled it down into the bag. You think it's the water temperature? Yeah, I think it was too cool. Especially for Dorada. The next morning we were approaching Santa Rosalia and leaving some of the difficult currents behind, or so we thought. The passage between Isla San Marcos and Punta Pulpito was calm and the night filled with sounds of breathing whales and dolphins. 
There were masses of phosphorescence that made us believe that we were going to run into the large creatures. Today was the day that we expected to encounter heavy wind. The clouds looked unusual. It looks so fluffy. Brrr. I left Robbie to pretty much deal with a fish on the line by himself while I went back to sleep. It was another barilete, or bloody skipjack, so he did his best to bleed most of the blood out of it. Dolphins, boobies, and frigate birds hunted vigorously before arriving at the second Isla Coronado of our passage. Yeah, I came through this passage at the worst friggin time. I've only taken out the camera now because I feel that the camera won't get so. I think that's the lumpiest we've done. Yeah, that was pretty choppy. It wasn't very powerful, but it was very choppy. Two washing machines. I knew it would be a washing machine. Next time we go around the island. Yeah. We have encountered some washing machine conditions here in the Sea of Cortez. This was one of the most extreme moments so far. The mistake we made was to go through the extremely shallow spot between the peninsula and the island, which was only several meters or 10 to 15 feet deep. We surfed down waves and somehow managed not to hit the sand and seaweed, which we could see at the bottom. We ripped the mainsail when we left the task of reefing until too late into the game. We were not heading enough up into the wind when we raised the main and caught it on our spreader tip. But Rosa raced towards Puerto Escondido under jib alone. Even after the wind subsided, the bumpy sea remained. We made our way then to Agua Verde, where we hoped to find warm enough water to clean the bottom in. There were also some night fish around to cook for dinner. Robbie's parents left us with sail tape some time ago, and now we had the chance to use it. We applied the tape on both sides of the sail, realizing only after the first side that it would be best to round off the edges to help it from peeling off.
As tradition dictates, Robbie had to sacrifice one pair of glasses within a hundred nautical miles of La Paz. So he has no glasses again. But we had ordered a pair of glasses when we traveled up to the States. They didn't come in time before we had to head back down here. We're going to be meeting some friends in La Paz who have generously and graciously brought down the new pair of glasses for Robbie. So you're just, you just have to go without glasses for a couple more days. A Dorado hit the fishing line, emphasizing our progression into warmer latitudes. We were entering the La Paz area again, after traveling about a week and a half all the way down from San Felipe. Pretty good, considering that the journey north, the previous season, had taken us about three months. We were tired from the urges of the bumpy Sea of Cortez, and we celebrated Christmas Day by entering the familiar harbor. down at the bottom of this video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching.